and I'm the doctor. <laughs> Glad to meet you all. Um, just so you know, do not trust anyone. Everybody could be a Zygon, I'm gonna not be a Zygon. Who knows who could be a Zygon? All I gotta say is this. Do not trust anyone. Right? Don't trust anyone? Yeah. Don't trust anybody. This is the doctor. Don't trust anybody! We've 
freaking loved this episode. This is such a great This episode. was a good episode of Doctor Who. Oh my god. And the funny thing is, I find it how ironic, but I don't know if they planned this or if it just happened this way. But, like, what's the odds that on D Halloween we have a scary episode of Doctor Who? This is great. I, this is and, great, guys. And then, it's, it's just like when Game of Thrones uh, aired on Father's Day, and it was... Well, you know what happened if you watched Game of Thrones. I'm not going to spoil it, but that it's ironic. It's great. So, in, and there's so many references to Halloween monsters Halloween in this, Halloween monsters. Too. I wonder it's, if they knew. They had to have known. I... I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, obviously they probably knew the schedule and like, oh, this is going to show up on Halloween. We got to have this and this in the episode. But, I mean, like for instance, there's one point where, okay, so the Doctor is deep undercover basically at the beginning of this episode and he, he realizes that the Zygons have actually, because he, he knows like devils of people and he's like, oh, I know because they're, they're obviously, you know, Zygons. And him and Nina have, you know, they're trying to keep this peace that they had in the 50th, that they mm -hmm. started then. Well, clearly, you know, in this episode... Yeah, like, because, like, at the beginning of the episode, it was so great, because it had the video of the Osgoods explaining the treaty and explaining the box, which we didn't even get to in this episode. Well, I feel like that's going to come into probably the second part of it. Which is great. I love how they didn't... You know, they, they're saving that. But anyway, so, and immediately after, they were just like, we hope it never comes to that, because then that will be the nightmare scenario. Cut to, everything's going to crap. <laughs> just, things are blowing up everywhere, Osgood's running, and it's just a mess, and then she gets caught and zappied, and it's just, she, had, she luckily contacted the doctor, and now we're here. So, yeah. but that was so great. <laughs> yeah, Such a great and intro. Then, and then we, and I found this ironic. So we cut to the doctor in the TARDIS by himself playing the guitar. And what song is he playing? Amazing, Amazing Grace. Grace. As there is freaking chaos going on all around the world. At first, at first I'm pretty sure everybody thought that was like Osgood's ringtone or something. Well, see, I, <laughs> just, I, I just thought that was like his message ringtone in general. Yeah. Like, but then we see him actually playing like, ah. Oh. Can we talk about how awesome Peter Capaldi is with the guitar this season? Seriously. Season? I'm so glad they kept it because it's so fitting of his character. Oh, and, uh, oh, oh. Uh, it's getting real. Hey, guys. Can I borrow these? Who's these? I don't know my room. I don't think it'll care. But yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, it is dark. Wait, Anyways. Wait, 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 wait. Um, but no. The electric guitar. Anyways, it's so, so yeah, the electric, yeah, obviously guitar, that is totally Capone's thing. It's so um, great. Besides the sunglasses, guitar is totally his thing. Like, yeah. I mean, like, the magicians were just, I think that's clear enough to say, that is his, that is his it's characteristic. His, it's, it's his, it's his aesthetic. Yeah. And, and I love how they've kept it, and I kind of wish, um, because, which episode was it? Was it um, before the flood, where he had the whole thing about the bootstrap paradox? Yes. And then he, and yeah. then that episode started off with like an electric guitar version of the Doctor Who thing. I kind of wish they kept it at least for this season because they keep bringing it back so often. Yeah. It seems like it's going to be a whole running thing throughout the series. Which I'm fine with because I, it's it, awesome. I'm fine with Capone. <laughs> it is I, awesome. I have no issues with it. Like, like if they had done this with Matt Smith, it would have been like. No, but see, Masters isn't exactly like Capaldi. Because... I know, because, because they're so totally different. It, this, just, this just works somehow. Yeah, so I mean, it, it's, it's not so not like when I first started out with saying that the song with sunglasses were a bad thing. Yeah. Like, right off the bat, I was like, Capaldi oh. guitar? Yeah, that works for me. Um, and then... but, but anyway, so, yeah, he's playing, he's playing Amazing Grace. And if you actually listen to it, the tortoise does make a like a bleep sound when the message arrives. You have to listen really good because the guitar is pretty much overpowering, overpowering everything. everything. Um, it's just great. But then once the message does appear, um, and Osgood did mention this in their in their video of a nightmare scenario. So of course the one thing that pops up on the doctor's monitor is nightmare, nightmare scenario. Because what else do you need? Um, and of course, at that point, he's like, oh, oh crap. crap. <laughs> it's like, no, crap is going down. Crap is indeed um, hitting the fan. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, so, you know, he, he goes back 
he ends up going back on Earth. I, I don't know if he was just floating around in space or if he actually was just still on Earth when the Taurus was parked in place. I don't know, because we don't know where he's from, so... I mean, I'm just gonna it's, it's all very fuzzy when the Companion doesn't, like, live with him. Yeah. Like what they did in the Russell T. Davies era. So, I mean, it's... I, Which I imagine is how he gets away with playing Amazing Grace at an ungodly uh, volume. Yeah. <laughs> just walking around the control room. That's great. But, so anyways, no, he, he eventually does um, get in contact with Unit, and they, they tell him that the ceasefire between the Zygons and the humans has officially been broken. Mm -hmm. um, and the Zygons are basically attacking and claiming Earth for themselves, pretty much. Um, and I have to say, and you and I talked about this a little bit, um, the involvement of Unit in Series 9 so far has been really good. And I, I'm glad because the past, like the past season, we only got Unit Correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but only like this finale, we only got you. Yeah, I think so. And, um, and, and Smiths. And, and before then, we didn't see them uh, except for. I don't think we've seen them since the Power of Three. Yeah. That's a long time ago. Well, no, 50th. 50th, but, was, but I mean, that was before. But still, there's like a whole series, pretty much, minus the. Yeah, we, we only see them like once or twice a season. And this season we've seen them a lot more, which is good because I feel we need to, mm -hmm. especially this episode. This is like... This is a crisis on Earth. You need Unit. You need Unit for this episode. And of course you need the Doctor, which, you know... Is now the President of the World. Well, no, he's still the President of the World. Well, he was, yeah, he still was, the President of the World from last season, but... Well, from, yeah, yeah from last season. Um, which, which, is, which is funny, because he's like, I don't want to be, like, legitimately the president of the world, but I will gladly hold the title as long as I get to keep this plane. Yeah, which, I don't know. And, I, then, and then the next thing you see is him, like, with the sunglasses and, like, yes. Yeah, like, doing kind of a Nixon thing. No, he was doing the peace sign. Well, yeah, but I can also see, well, Nixon was kind of, Nixon was like, you know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, kind of like Nixon, but anyways. Um, We're not saying Peter Capaldi is Nixon. No, oh no, gosh no. Um, but, long story short, basically, the Doctor and um, Unit talk about what's happened and what's going on. Um, and, you know, clearly the Doctor has also been investigating it. Mm -hmm. which, is in, he, which is interesting, actually, if you think about it, because it's like, how, you know, how did he, like, first suspect that something was up in order to actually start investigating on his own? Well, I mean, he got to think about the nightmare scenario, so... Well, but see, I feel like... I feel like he started investigating before that. I don't know, maybe... Or maybe, or maybe he... Or maybe chronologically, he got the thing and then went back in time a little bit from when he got it to maybe try to figure out uh, when it's going down. Yeah, because when he, he did call Clara, he said, I'm in the 21st century. Yeah, I'm in the 21st century sometime. So, I mean... I... And he called Clara 127 times. Yeah. And which... she didn't answer her phone for an unexplained reason. What the heck, Clara? Again. Clara! Another issue of Clara. I'm sorry, but so, she's going back and forth for me this season. Yeah, well, no. Okay, well, yeah, no, I agree with that. She's she's not staying consistent. And She's awesome one episode, and she's like useless in another episode, and then she's awesome again, and then she's gone. Although, <laughs> although you know, maybe that'll change. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, I don't. I, I just know. need some consistency. You know. Um, That's all I want. But so, anyways, you and the you and the doctor pretty much figure out. Okay, we need to find all the the like zygons and make sure because apparently they have pretty much all been exposed. Yep. Pretty much. And when the doctor is you know undercover, he talks to two girls. Who we find out are actually Zygon commanders. Like the head commanders. So. Like, which is weird. Which is and, awesome. Well, weird but awesome. It's weird but awesome. Yeah. Um, and and it's a heck of a way to stay undercover. Oh yeah. Well, but they look about the same. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of a giveaway. It but, is, but... I mean, anyways, whatever. You know, they have their, they, have, they have their Cinderella backpacks, so that's okay. Well, Cinderella and Monster High. I think oh yeah, said. Monster High. <laughs> I, I at first I thought it was Darth Vader, but we rewound it, and I think it is Monster High. Monster High. Um, anyway. And so, <laughs> so after that scene, okay, I I just have to mention this because I literally I had to stop. Yeah. I had to stop <laughs> I the episode see. and I had to rewind because I I was like I 
thought I saw something, and I go to rewind, and when it shows the scene of you know, the safe house, like Kate and uh, yeah, like, Jack, 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 yeah, Jack, that's, yeah, that's her name, um, the the black unit woman, that's her name. Well, I'm just I'm just clarifying. Mm -hmm. That's who it is. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, they they're walking down the stairs and they're talking. And the first thing we see on the wall is if, if you look... It like, it like pans down. Well, for, no, first of all it goes sideways, yeah, then, it sideways pans then it pans down. down. But if you look really quick, and it does come back later, but you have to look really quick. There's a frame, a picture on a frame on the wall. And guess who it is? William Hartnell. The first doctor. It's great. <laughs> Just like, all, that's, that's when you know this episode is going to be awesome. Like... I, mean, I don't even think the first Doctor knew who Unit was, because uh, I don't, because I've, I've watched Casa Cuba, I don't ever remember the first Doctor meeting Unit. Second I think, Doctor did. I, 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 haven't got, I haven't gotten there yet, but, I, but yeah, the first Doctor definitely didn't meet Unit. No, second I don't. Doctor, I, I believe that the second Doctor did. I'm almost toward the end, though. Second Doctor, yeah, second Doctor for sure did. Um, definitely the third Doctor, because well, yeah, he got stuck with them for... Yeah. for but anyway, so... I don't know, that was just kind of a little... That was a fun little Easter egg there. Yeah, which I liked. That was really like, great. Um, I'm really glad you went back. Because yeah. I missed it the first time. Well, I, like, it went by and it was like... <laughs> whoa! I was like, whoa, wait a second, that looks, that looks like something familiar. And then like, oh, uh, because it is. It is. It's, 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 the, it's the first doctor. First doctor. Which, again... It, go, it goes back to the callbacks that they're making in, yeah. in these recent seasons, which is amazing. Um, so, yeah, so basically... Um, so we get through all the unit stuff, you know, obviously like they're going around the world and this is probably like, the first 20-25 minutes of the episode. They're pretty much going around different places trying to find all the different Psycons and yeah, so forth. Yeah, trying um, to find their bases. Um, which we end up at some church. The Doctor and another unit commander from like another like, uh, branch. From, from, from like the, the more militarized branch of the of unit now. Um, um, and they're there with like a, their their little group of men yeah. with guns. You know, they're soldiers pretty much. They're soldiers. Um, and there's a scene where all, all the people come out of the church and they look like people that the soldiers knew. And we were like yelling throughout this whole scene. And like there's okay. there's this one soldier. <laughs> there's so much wrong. And and his his commander who's with the doctor kept saying, "Do not fall influence to these people." And they like, were like, "Okay, we got this." And then, this, and, then the, and then what looks like this guy's mom comes out of the church and is like, and is like we're okay, don't shoot us, they are holding us in here. And the one they thing I had an issue with this is the guy, he started off good. Yeah, he was and fine because he, he, he asks the good questions because, well, he didn't really ask anything until, yeah. hi. So, he didn't really ask anything until his commander told him to, and then he was like, date, date in place of my birth, or what was the name of my first teddy bear? And then, but, but then she was like, I don't remember, you're not going to shoot me because I don't remember one well, little thing. But see, that's not the like, thing. Like, when he asked the date, date in place of your birth, she completely avoided like, the she, question. She, 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 like, deviated from that, misdirected, and was just like, we're all safe in here, you gotta come inside and help and us, and it's like, and it's like, no, persist, get the answer. And, it's, it's uh, like... And he falls for it, and not just him, but more people, well, see, people okay. come out of yeah. this church that, that are all family members or significant well, people to all of these soldiers, and they all fall for it. And see now, honestly, myself, I wanted just that guy. If he, if he did, just that guy to go in, and the rest of them just stay outside to surround the perimeter, like they were supposed to do. But they all fell for it, and we were like, we were just sitting here yelling at the TV, like, you idiots! It's like it's you idiots! You know they're shapeshifters, right? You know they're zygons. You know they're zygons. <laughs> we know they're zygons. <laughs> oh. And. I'm, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I don't think the commander needed to be so much, you know, aggressive. But at the same but time, I'm glad right. she did, because she... But because she, she was right. Yeah, and she was right, and I knew, I mean, we agreed with her. She, she knew they were Zygons, and we were like, yeah, they are Zygons. So why, when she broke in, and of course we saw their, 
base of operations, yeah. one of them anyways. Yeah, um, it's all their like, their like military map board table that all military people have. And then we see these little fuzzballs on the ground. Yeah, whenever they kill people, it's like little fuzz, like these balls of like, I almost thought it was piles of ash, but no, there's apparently like hair and just mush and zappy zappiness. Yeah. So, Pretty graphic, actually. Yeah. And then, <laughs> uh, I must have the most, like, on time for real? guesses for this episode. Cause he I guess... predicted almost every single line in this one scene. <laughs> I don't even remember what like, it was. So it's, 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 it's when the... Okay, oh, when they had the Zygon, yeah. Yeah, so when the commander says, you know what, we need to start blowing the crap out of this place. Because <laughs> I don't care, you know. I've had... All my men are dead. It's yeah. like, at this point, who cares? And then <laughs> she leaves, and I guess, like, oh, what's the odds that we were here? Osgood's like, doctor, doctor. Five seconds later, help doctor, me, help doctor, me. I'm like, yes, I called it. I get so mad. <laughs> and then like a whole scene after that because they find um they find one Zygon in this area and like have them strapped to a thing that reminded me a lot of that chair that they had like the master and the doctor in yep. at the end of time. Except they were standing up because I don't think you can make that thing sit down for very long time. Yeah. So um so they're talking to this thing and he he pretty much Every single line of that Zygon said, he pretty much predicted. Oh, because uh, I've only watched that preview scene like five, oh, six times. Oh, there's a preview scene. That yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I don't watch previews because yeah. of... There was uh, like two scenes. Yeah. yeah we don't watch one. trailers in my family. Mm -hmm. But no. Um, but yeah. I mean, but <laughs> I don't know. Like, the funny thing is, I think after they did start bombing the place, they grabbed the Zygon from the rubble, and then they brought on the, the yeah. air, air, the airplane. The air. And, um, great. and then they start questioning him, and the Zygon's like, you're the president of the world. Well, the doctor's kind of like, well, you know, I just, I just hold the title. I don't really, you know, yeah. personally want to be the president of the world. <laughs> but then, they're basically like, all right, so what do you want? And the Zygons went, Zygons like, we want the world. And, yep. and then I think this is a perfect moment to move into <laughs> um, Clara's side of the story. Yeah, because we haven't really talked about her side of the story. Except for the Except beginning. for the phone calls. Yeah. So piggybacking off the phone calls, yeah. which how the heck do you miss 120? Okay, so you know how I, I you, know, know. you know how when you pick up your phone and you have like seven missed calls from your mom and you know you're you, you know that you've messed up, you are a failure in life. Yeah. If you miss 127 calls from the doctor, again, everything how, how do is you, how do you miss first of all that how meaning? do you do that? Second of all. Everything is going to crap if that is happening to you right now, and you're the doctor's companion. And she just looks at him and is just like, "Haha, he's calling me 120 well, see, times." Well, see, like she goes to start to call him, but then she puts the phone away. No, she listens to the voicemail for a second, and then, um, well, she's going to her apartment. I she's going up the stairs to her apartment, and she sees this little kid on the stairs, and he looks scared and alone. And she's like, "Oh, where's your parents?" And, she, and this is me, like, "My mom and dad are are gone." Yeah, and then at that point. I screamed out, yes, because they are, are, are not Zygons. <laughs> They're dead. They're Zygons. <laughs> so she goes into this kid's apartment, and the dad is there. The dad is there. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh, your kid's outside. And I'm like, Clara. I mean, fair enough. There's no way she could have known. But at the but same point, the guy <laughs> gave such the I mean, blank expression. Like, like, and then he just like turns around like a robot and then goes, daddy's here. And the, this most like heartless thing. And then the mom comes out, and they're dragging the kid. The dragon, the, the dad's carrying the kid in, kicking and screaming. And then the woman's like, "We can, we can take him." It's like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. And the next time we see her, she's outside the building, puts her hair back, and then finally calls the doctor back and is like, "Did you just call yourself Doctor Disco?" Which is yeah. Great. Again, you know, the doctor kept calling himself various things throughout. Yeah. Which like, dis Disco kind of reminds me of. Uh, I don't know if it's the Monster Mash or Staying Alive, where it's kind of a disco. Like some, I, I think someone at some point did a Halloween version of that, which is why I think, I don't know, I, I heard something like that. Talk to disco. Anyways. I think he was just having a little bit too much fun being undercover. Well, yeah. I mean, he is the doctor. He is the doctor. He is the doctor. So then, um, so she gets recruited in with the doctor in a unit to, you know, 
investigate the Zygons. Yeah. And the whole <laughs> the whole time she's there, she's annoying the crap out of me because like they find was it like an underground like base thing with like, well, like the, first, the computer? First of all, okay, so first of all, she meets up with Kate and Jax. Yeah. And then um, they go back to her place to go grab some stuff. No, that, no, this is before that. The, with the computer polyp, and he was like, you know, trying to work it. And oh, she's yeah, making yeah, snarky yeah, comments about. Right. I was like, do you want to be alone with so, that? So yeah, thing? they, they, I'm they, like, they, they find one of the the Zygon's control bases, pretty much. And it's all blobby stuff. And it looks very like. And the clerk and Clara makes a, a comment it's like, because the doctor's like kind of feeling around, and she's like, are, are you? He's like, do you want to be alone with that thing? And it's no, like, like Clara, you're being really annoying again. It's like, Clara. And then the only useful bit of information that she has in the whole conversation is because, because the Zygons this whole time have been saying at the end of their videos, truth or consequences. And then she says, and it sounds like a threat. And then uh, people, and where they're like, what does that even mean? And she's like, oh, it's a place in New, in New Mexico, in America. Truth or consequences. They they named it that because of a bet. And they were like, how do you know that? And she's like, it was from a, a what was it? A trip. Oh, from a, it's like, like a trivia quiz. Basically a trivia show. Trivia, yeah, yeah. Tri yeah, trivia show, and she says, I, I, I memorized the trivia questions so I can win. And I'm like, Clara, why are you being such a jerk right now? Yeah. And I'm not like... So Clara. then, so later on, um, the doctor's like, alright, so Kate, you go there, do your stuff. Clara, Jax, you guys got this, this is your thing, and then I'm gonna go and help the others save people because that's my job. He literally says that. Because that's, that's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> that was great. Um, and so they all break up, and then... And then Clara's like, wait, but I have to go back to my apartment so to yeah. get something. And I'm like, what could you possibly need right now? You have unit. <laughs> do yeah. you need, did you forget your phone? Because clearly you didn't. Did you need your charger? <laughs> Is it your special charger, Clara? Mm -hmm. So... She takes Jax back to her apartment, where we happen to see the mom, the mom and dad from earlier dragging a bag, roughly the size of a child, <laughs> mm. into an elevator. Hmm. Hmm. Sketchy much? <laughs> Very sketchy. Um, so, they, so they go into the elevator, and they basically follow them down. The, well, they run down the stairs to meet them before they get hit mm -hmm. at the bottom of the elevator. And, and what? They're not there. Oh my gosh. Where, where, did, where they did, go? did they go? And the elevator's doing this weird thing where it's like going up and down at the same time yeah. somehow. And it's like, what? So they go inside and then it closes and there's like a goopy thingy behind the panel. It's going. Yeah, it's, 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 Zygon, it's, Zygon, it's Zygon Ooze. It's Zygon Ooze. And she opens it and Jax is like, don't touch it. And of course Clara touches it. But see, at, see at this point, um, I usually don't say this, but like, I think at this point, it's, I'm kind of glad she did, because if they, if she didn't touch it, like they just end up nowhere. Well, I mean, given given what we know now, that I don't want to mention. Until we're not going to mention yet, but but given what we know now, it makes sense. It does make because perfect sense. It makes perfect sense why Clara would do that because of what happens at the end. But for what we know now, I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Clara would touch it. Like when um, I think it was Journey to the Center of the TARDIS when they're all when the TARDIS is like exploding from the inside mm -hmm. and. Clara's by herself, and so she comes across a door with a red button that has a flashing red light. She's like, that, that probably means danger. Do not touch. And she pushes, pushes the button, there's a big flaming thing coming in, and she's like, yeah, big mistake. And I'm like, yeah, Clara. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so that's just how Clara is. But anyway. But anyway, so yeah, so they, so find, they, they go down the <coughs> they go They go into the evil Wonka elevator that takes them everywhere. It yeah. goes <laughs> sideways, long ways, slant ways. Um, and it goes down underground. And it goes to the place, um, which when I looked at it, it kind of looked like the same place that, um... Flatline that, took place. That episode Flatline took place. And I mean, it could just be a continuation of the same tunnel. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's on the ground, so I mean, I mean this, is, this is... I mean, it's This still, is TV. People use... People reuse sets all the time. Doctor has done it a lot, loads of times. Oh, yeah. Um, it's not unusual. No, it's not. But, um... Don't sing the song, Rachel. What song? It's not unusual. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, so anyways, then they find out. So they find this, like, Zygon hideout thing. And then they run back into the elevator, obviously, go get, you know. <coughs> they gotta go get unit. Get unit, and so, basically, what's happening on both sides is the doctor mm -hmm. is doing the thing with the soldiers, and then... And, and Kate, yeah, we should Kate, talk about Kate for a little bit. Kate she, she, is... She, she went to New Mexico, she went to Truth or Consequences. 
where some serious crap has gone on here. Oh, yeah. It's like a ghost town. There's only one lady that we encounter who's like, uh, who's who is part of the police force that pretty much everybody's gone. Mm -hmm. And so she takes her around and you know explains what happened. There's um, she there's this great scene where she takes Kate to a dumpster that has is full of like these blobs that the, the people that the Zygons kill hairy, leave, yeah, leave behind balls, the little yeah. hairy zappy balls. And so she takes her to a dumpster that's full of these things, and they're making little zappy noises. And then she closes it, and there's four more behind them that are also making those. And noises. I love that shot because it's such it's like it's such it, an it, ominous like it, it gives you chills. It's, it's like, like it's like oh just one, and then it zooms. Up. Oh, oh, this is way worse than we thought it was. It was so bad. Um. So, and the doctor also has the Zygon that he has to worry about on the plane. Yeah. Well, I'm tired. Like, but see, but then, like... I'm tired of all with, these with, Zygons with, with on the that, plane. With that Zygon, you know, he... It, not too much happens on the plane. We should talk about, though, the conversation that the doctor and Osgood have. Yes. <laughs> because that's important. Because, one, <laughs> it has nostalgic to it. And two, it has information on the Zygons. And three, it has a joke about the Doctor's underwear. That would be kind of nostalgic, but you know, anyways. But the Doctor's underwear. <laughs> um, so yeah, so, so, okay, well, hold on, let me finish. Yeah, okay, go ahead, go let ahead. Let me finish with Kate, and then yes, we'll get back. Yes, we'll finish with Kate. So basically, you know, they, later on, we see Kate's looking at stuff in the, um, in the Sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. And the, the deputy, I'm guessing she's a deputy. She's probably the deputy. Um, Comes in and, she, and she's like kind of talking about me. Then she's like, I just had to make sure. Drops her hat. I just had to make sure that there is no backup. Because that was the first thing she said. It was like, where's your backup? Yeah. Which, I don't know. From the beginning, like I was kind of like, do mm. I really want to trust you? Because I at mean, this point, I feel like... It's an episode about Zygons. You really should know not to trust anybody. Yeah. And so... And I didn't trust her. So when, I mean, I, I should I should have expected this. But she eventually does turn into a Zygon, and I mean, I, we should have seen it from a mile away, obviously. I will, I, I will talk about that when we get to later things. Um, but, so she, <coughs> it looks like she zaps Kate. Kate. And then but I have a theory. I have a theory. Mm. What if, because this has happened before in Doctor Who, where it looks like the enemy has actually killed the character and like taken form of that character, but what if by some chance Kate actually was able to counter the Zygon's account attack before it hit her, and when somebody calls out? Yeah, yeah, they, she get yeah they they get a call in the deputy's office from uh from another uh Zygon, and mm -hmm. and you know. We see Kate responding, but what if it's actually Kate? Yeah, see, I feel like it actually might be. Because she would, <laughs> she would know exactly what to say to blend in, because she's been because she's this awesome. before. Because she's great. Um, I guess we'll find that out. Yeah, we'll the, find out. We'll like, find that out in the next episode. I honestly hope, Hopefully we'll have a bigger crew. I hope so. For real. I really hope so. It's, we're, we're getting tired of it just being us. It's, it's getting lonely. Yeah. Guys, come on. Come on. But anyways, um, we miss you guys. So, and so anyway. Anyways, so on the plane, <laughs> as, as this is happening, <laughs> on the plane, um, <coughs> the doctor and Osgood are talking. And oh, we should probably mention that before, because uh, he asked this to um, to Kate and Jax as well about about Osgood, uh, about which. Uh, oh, which one is which the Which one is the Zygon one? and which one is... Well, no, it's not the doctor's asking, it's or it was, well, Kate. It was Kate. And the doctor's like, both. It was like, which one, so which one's the real Osgood? Both. both. Okay, which one's the Zygon? Both. both. Like, and again, <laughs> as we are constantly, now we're going to hit the head with this concept. I mean, okay. Zy okay, they even straight out say this. They say a human, Zygon. What's the word, everybody? Hybrid. hybrid! Oh! My gosh, this uh, hybrid thing keeps coming up! I mean... And ours, I, I, I mean, you can you can bring up that she's both a Zygon and a human. Yeah. But he had to go out and plainly say a hybrid. hybrid. Like, that's the thing that with this season, it's like one of my only critiques, is that they're having a really hard time with subtlety. Yeah. Like, or like in, um... I, 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 I broke our promise that we weren't going to mention those episodes again. Uh -huh. But in one line in Before the Flood kind of bothers me because you could have done without it. When Clara is clearly worried that the Doctor might not come back, 
this is after they see the ghost of the doctor. Um, Lun comes over and is trying to comfort her, and she, he's he, at first he starts off subtle and is like, "So you've been in this situation before, right? Where it seems like everything's going to be bleak, but you, you know, what do you say to those people when you know everything's going to be okay?" And he's like, "I'm asking what I should say to you," and I'm like, "You didn't really have to spell that out. If you watch the scene go on for long enough, you the viewer can work that out. You didn't have to spell it out. So when you." already have it sort of in plain language that she is both human and Zygon. You don't have to say, put it out there, that she's a hybrid. It was different with Maisie because yeah. it, was, it had to be explained because we didn't know what was going on. Only he knew what was going on. But the, you see, the thing is, and I, I am saying this, I think, at the end of the episode, like, I have a feeling that the season finale for this, this season is going to have something to do with hybrids. Because one, it, it, it started in the first two part of Davros, the Time Lord Dalek hybrid, and then it came Continue, the human, the back. human alien with Maisie, Maisie, and now it's human Zygon with Osgood. I, I, I mean, back to the because that, that's what I loved about the Russell T Davies like arcs is that they had that subtlety to it. it with the exception of maybe Torchwood, they had Bad Wolf, mm -hmm. which they did bring up like once or twice. Yeah. But Saxon was such a great twist because yes, because they, they because they didn't say anything. I mean, every now and then you'd hear the name Saxon, mm -hmm. but it, even in Torchwood, they they had this too, where like they'd just be walking down the street and you'd say a see a vote Saxon poster. That was those were great subtle hints. Mm -hmm. That was such a great arc. But now they're just like hitting us over the head. It's, a, it's about hybrids. It's about hybrids. It's about hybrids. If you don't think it's about hybrids, screw you. It's about hybrids. Yeah. So, anyways. Uh, anyways. Anyway, moving so, on. So they're having a nice conversation. So, on the plane. On the plane. Osgood and the doctor are talking. And, and you know. And he, he, he talks about her outfit because this is the Osgood. I think the other Osgood was the one that had like the fourth doctor scarf and she's the one who got vaporized. Yeah. So the other one is the one that we're in the video. She has like the seventh doctor's uh, sweater vest that has the question marks on it. And then also has the collar. It has the collar questions. with the question marks on it and she's wearing that on the plane. So the doctor's like, nice collar. <laughs> and, and. I like this part because it is a huge classic who call it's so out. Great. It's so huge, and, and she's and, and she she's like, well, you you used, you used to wear something like that. I was like, like oh, yes, oh yeah, yes I did. <laughs> I love how the way he responds to that. It's like, oh, oh yeah, trust me, I know. I I remember my horrible fashion choices. And then he's he's like, he even said like, then he have like question mark he's boxes like, you, or something. Like he's that. like, you, she, well, she said you used to wear it. He's like, oh yeah, I still do. And she's like, um, and he's like. I have question mark underwear. And it's like, oh yeah. Yeah. Which I totally call. And then and then she says the funny thing is like, so then what's really the question? <laughs> <laughs> makes you makes one wonder what the question is. Yeah. <laughs> and then basically it goes from there. So he her pretty much reiterating when she's in the because he because he because he asks her about um who she is who she is and he's like so which one are you? And the good thing about this conversation I like is that. Um, she blatantly says, you know, I'm probably both, but at the same time, my intentions are for the peace to remain. I do not want any of this, you know, you know, this, this chaos going on and so forth. And, mm -hmm. um, it's a really great it's, speech. I mean, yeah, I, we're, we, we're not going to give too much away because it's really something you need to watch. Um, it really is. It's, it's just a good experience. And then so that's what this episode was. It was a really good experience. Well, it was just—it was a heck of a really experience. Really good. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, what, it's, al it's, what else in that conversation did they have? Is that it? That's—I mean, it's in a nutshell. It's pretty much it. It, it was just about yeah. hybrid. Yeah. <laughs> so. So speaking of hybrid, no, not really. But <laughs> Zygons. Zygons. <sighs> I'm gonna give one. I don't remember who wrote this episode. It was like, I, but I'm gonna give them a huge freaking good job. It was someone harness. I don't know. Because I remember because I thought I misread it as Harkness. It was like Robert Harness or something. Well, whoever we wrote this episode, bravo on you, sir, because you totally caught us off guard. Because, <laughs> okay, so let me explain. So Clara and Jax bring in uh, some armed. Unit men, mm -hmm. because they found this base, and you know they gotta they gotta go through it and see what what they have cooking, and, and there's this the funny scene that we predicted. Uh, oh yeah, so they're also it was, it's also another scene of Clara being being 
a jerk. And it's like they're, they're all like the soldiers are all starting to walk towards the ba the underground layer that is there. And at that point, I said Star Wars reference. It's a trap. It's a trap. Uh, which, funny enough, it was. But we'll explain and, that. Which is and currently. and Jax um, asks Clara uh, if she ha if she thinks. This is this is like the end of the world now, and Clara just goes, "You middle-aged people, no offense, but you all seem to think everything's good. the end of the world is coming." And then later I said she would say, "Oh yes, I think I think and you're then right. they, it is the end of the world." So they find all these. They turn the corner. They find all these. This like this red, very red room, and it's got all these weird-looking mm -hmm. pods like everywhere. Containment pods. Containment pods. Yeah, everywhere. for zygons. For zygons, and Clara, uh, Clara very obviously goes, "Yeah, you were right." She's like, "What?" It's the end of the world. I'm like... But see, yeah. n after that moment though, it actually adds more justification to that. Because, here, I'm gonna... I'm and gonna. I know, but I'm, I'm just talking about from a viewing standpoint. Now I think of it differently because of what but you have to talk at, about. But at that from, moment, at that moment yeah. I'm just explaining how I felt in the moment. Yeah. Because I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> no one knew. But, so we get... So they go into the base, they bring more reinforcements. And Clara's just like, shoot everything! Well, yeah, she's like, and then Jack's like, what, you don't know what's in there. <sighs> Clara wipes away one of the containments, like there's like kind of some stuff on it. it it's, and, it's hard uh, to say. Um, whose face do we see? Um, Her. Clara! <laughs> and then we look at Clara, and this is the point where I was like, oh, Crap. Crap! We've been fooled this Crap whole baskets. time. And then Clara turns around, him. has an evil spark. Very evil. And then Jack starts to realize, and just like, oh, crap. and she even says, "Was oh my gosh, this is a everybody get the it's a out of here." It's a trap. They all start to start to get out, and then Clara and, and like thousands. But they, of, but they turn the corner, and there's like dozens of Zygons, and it's like we're screwed. And then she's like, "So destroy all the traitors." So pretty much all the people. Die. Everyone's dead. <laughs> and, all and then all and, Cla ones. and Clara goes free. Clara goes free. And everything makes sense now. And so the Zygon that called Kate's location was That's actually Clara. Clara. Well, um, the Clara Zygon, but we're gonna call her Clara. <laughs> and, yeah. And we're still unsure if that was actually Kate, because we didn't see what transpired between them. I still think it is, but I could I'm, I'm just saying because we don't know. We don't it's know. A, yeah, it's yeah. speculation on our part, but it, 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 yeah. Going by just just because of what we're watching here. Yeah. This is Doctor Who. This is probably the direction they're going in. I'd be surprised if it wasn't. Yeah. But anyway, so we see um, Clara Zygon go back to um, the UK unit base. She gets into the infirmary, grabs something, which really someone shouldn't have. It's only the last case scenario. It's a rock, a really high-powered, like, heat-seeking rocket launcher. Um, which, um, now, okay. Now, if, if you guys remember looking at the trailer for this series, you saw that Clara... That shot of Clara with Clara the weapon. Shooting the weapon. Well, yeah, it's not Clara, it's, it's the it's, Zygon. That, that scene is... It's much less it's awesome. It's so much less misleading. awesome, which is great. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what you do. You, that, that was great. Yeah. Um, it's so a good teaser as well as you know not giving away the plot. Yeah. And so she, so she's <coughs> she's talking to another <coughs> Zygon commander, saying the UK unit base section of the world is it's pretty much taken, taken out. And then she says, or it will be, and then it shows like, a well, bleep, well, mostly. and then it shows a bleep on a plane, and we're all like, oh, oh crap, the doctor's the doctor. on that plane. And I, again, I said this from the episode, I'm like, what's the odds that the doctor is, one, the president of the world, two, on a plane, three, the plane that is by unit, and four, is going to freaking explode. I mean... What is the freaking odds? What are the odds? So obviously Clara... Wait, he, has, he has to just stop getting on that plane, because that plane is bad news for him. Any plane is Any bad plane. news for him. But specifically that plane. Well, no, the last plane blew up. So, like, this, this is... That's true. This is... Yeah, any plane. Any plane, pretty much. Don't get on the plane, Doctor. Don't do it. Just use the TARDIS. Just use the TARDIS. Um, 
But now, Clean so, baby, cool. so Clara goes to the location where the doctor is. She calls the doctor, the doctor thinking it's actually Clara. He's like, because then the, um, at that point the Zygon's like, yep, we're about to take over the world. Well, he's no, like, he's, he's actually says, oh, we've already, this invasion's been going on for a year now. We've actually already been doing it. Well, you guys never knew it. So it's like. So now the doctor's panicking a little bit. He's like, oh crap. And then he gets a call from Clara. And it's like, Clara, you gotta get out of there. This crap is going down. And, and I she's just. Like, and she's like, oh yeah. And now, well, while she's assembling this huge weapon, and, and it's, it's like, it's like no nonchalant, it's like so nonchalant, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, you're breaking up. No, it's oh. just like, oh, I'm sorry, Clara's dead, Kate Stewart too, have fun dying. Yeah, and then she aims, aims the rocket launcher at the plane, and the thing goes up, literally, <laughs> we hear something explode, they don't show it, it goes to the black. Gonna, they're obviously going to show us what happens next. Because you kind of Because of to. course it ends there. Yeah. I mean, obviously it ends. But then there. you it ends there and. I because uh, Connor wasn't here, I kind of stood in for him. Well, I was see, like, I did too. What? Yeah, now so I was like, what? Like literally when it ended, her and I were like, what? No, no, you can't end there. And that super long. Yeah, Connor. Yeah, that's a reference to Connor. Um. Thanks for logging in. Yeah. Help your honored Clara, uh, Clara Connor. Yeah. We're talking about Clara too much. No, we're not because she she does she deserves talking about this time. Oh yeah. Because well, literally she has. Because a she's a different character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how ironic. You know? I love how this icon took all like the jerky qualities of, of, Clara. of Clara and just sort of embodied them. I mean, because it makes sense, it and it's, it almost seems like they're making a satire of themselves. Because I, mean, I mean, they must know. But no. anyway, so yeah, that it ends. So that happens. It ends on, <laughs> on that her note. firing at the at the plane. Um, oh man! Now this is just a little, a little speculation for next episode. Yeah. But um, there were actually times in Classic Who where the Doctor actually could call the TARDIS right to him at that moment and get out right away. Well, yeah. I so. I mean, if that happened, I'd be like, yeah, makes sense. I mean. So, I mean, I not that I didn't love him flying through the air to get into the TARDIS and that last, was last, last, last season, season oh, one. That, oh, that don't get me wrong, that was awesome. That was but, amazing. but at the same time, I don't want the same thing twice. Yeah. I like mix it up and add some of that classic stuff. And you have to say Bob's good too. Like. Well, yeah, but I mean, like incorporate that he can call the TARDIS to his exact location and that he can get away as fast as the TARDIS arrives. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's only the... I mean, with your streak of predicting things this episode, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, if they didn't do it, I'd be a little disappointed, because come on. Okay, an exploding plane, how the heck are you going to get out and moments to live? Oh, we oh the you TARDIS. call the TARDIS to you, and you get the frick out of there. I mean, the TARDIS would probably know, oh, crap, this plane is blowing up, but then at the same point, she's thinking, Oh crap, the doctor's there. I need to save my 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 man. doctor, my, my thief. Man very much. My thief. Um But yeah, so and then uh, I mean obviously, you know, next episode I feel Oh. Oh. You know, I just thought about this. I don't, I don't know if it will happen. Oh. I don't know. But you know how we've been talking about so much about death around Clara? Mm-hmm. What if? Follow me here. What I'm trying. By the end of the second part of this, Clara doesn't make it through. No. Think about it though. No, we're keeping Jenna until Christmas. But see, like, what if by some reason she comes back in Christmas as like a like because it's kind of like a time thing the Christmas is. Yeah. So it goes back in time. So it could the doctor could go back to time where Clara like is still alive. Like in the end of time. Yeah. I, screw that scene. Man. Uh, anyway, but <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I, I love mean, I love it, but I hate it. But I mean I mean I could be totally wrong, I could be totally right. But I mean, what are the odds that she actually <laughs> die. could die from the Zygons? I mean I mean, well, okay, so after after this two part, we only have four episodes left in the season, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, seven to twelve. Seven, yeah. seven, eight. 
9, 10, 11, 12, or 13. Well, 13 is usually the Christmas special. Mm. Whatever. Anyways. But, but yeah. That'd be crazy. Or if they somehow like brought her back for like the finale. We don't know. We're speculating. Speculating. But I mean, again, I just thought of this and it's like... I'm not... I I'm, mean... I'm it, not going to totally discount that because... I mean, it I could wouldn't happen. Face it. it could happen. This is Doctor Who. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. I mean, Rory died like 12 times, so... <laughs> yeah. I mean... Jack. Just, Jack. Just Jack. Doesn't die. Just Jack. <laughs> and then Maisie doesn't die. And, you know. Well... Um, but overall, yeah, so that was the episode, so obviously... Actually, Clara already has died multiple times. Yeah. yeah. Maybe not as herself, but... No, but you know. But you know. But anyway, so, honestly, as you can tell, we absolutely love this episode. This is a great a good episode. Good episode, a great Halloween episode. Yeah. Can, um, um, before we get to consensus, mm -hmm. can we talk about how... At least to me, it seemed like there was a lot of obvious commentary about stuff going on in the world right now. Like what, uh, whether or not we should bomb this entire area just because there might there if there are Zygons there. Well, and I, I, I'll, the whole time I'm just thinking about stuff going on in the Middle East and the, and Islamophobia and the whole. It was very see, it was very subtle. I, I don't think I, I, they, I, I see where you're going with that. Yeah. But at the same time, I almost I don't think they're going quite to that extent. They're just going to they like, get into that stuff a little bit just to kind of explain like what the morals are of yeah like, what, and, and what I, the doctor's morals are compared to what like those who are trained to kill morals I, are. And I get that. And, and I was just and they the what. If that was what they were going for, they did it very brilliantly. Where they weren't, they weren't preachy about it. They weren't. It, it wasn't. If that's what it was about, it wasn't obvious. Mm -hmm. I just kind of made that connection because I've been keeping track of what's going on, uh, and it seemed it seemed kind of similar with with the language that was going on, yeah. and how people only stopped. Um, like in the scene where they were going to bomb this one town with the doctor and unit. Um, and they were just about to blow this place up, and then this door opens on the screen, and there's this the lady who's about to like you know fire the thing. Uh, she sees uh, a man and a little boy that are about to be blown up, and it's her family, and that's the only reason she does not that that that, that, bomb, yeah, yeah. that, that, that they don't bomb that place right then. I feel like that was just a, another very subtle commentary about you know. Yeah. Well, and see, in that scene as well, I think, the doctor's like, isn't there a way where we can solve this without bombing more people? Because yeah. that's and just going to make them even more mad at us. And for real. Just make it even more worse than it is. And it makes sense, because that's pretty much the doctor's ideology, always. Yeah. Um, try, to, try to find the more peaceful path, yeah. and then when that doesn't work, the, the violent path is only a last resort. Yeah. Which is great that he, that he did it sort of become a little bit more lenient to that because in the Russell T Davies era, I talked about this a little bit yeah. during the episode. The Russell T in, during the Russell T Davies era, um, unit was much more militarized than it seems to be now with Kate in charge. Um, pretty much every time you saw unit was when like in episodes like this where there was a crisis. That's what I was going to talk about. It reminded me a lot of the Santar and stratagem. Except, ah, yeah, uh, yeah. except that actually was an invasion. Uh, I was well, I mean, in this, this I mean, is it, still technically it's, an invasion. It's technically an invasion, but it's more like a rebellion or a re or an uprising yeah. or a revolution because the Zygons are so are have been integrated for like a year now yeah. um, into society as normal people, um, and now they're like, we want to be ourselves and have our, we want to go home, and it's just like. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. We want to be um closeted Zygons. Yeah, but, but just yeah. I, I just thought that was interesting. It's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah. That's just what I took from it. So yeah, so uh, I guess it's come to kind of consensus time finally. After I don't know how long this video is so far. But who knows? <laughs> who knows? Yeah. We'll find out. Um. So go ahead. So what would you give this episode? <laughs> nine to nine point five. Wow. I'm in between there. 
Just because... So like 9.25? 9.25, <laughs> I would say. I'm, I'm like this close to making it a 9.5. Just because this episode felt brilliantly really written. There were lots of... There were some predictable things about it, yes, which is probably the reason that it's not a 9.5. Uh, and even though Clara did piss me off, it, there was a reason for it. Because she was in Clara pretty much the entire episode. Mm -hmm. um, and that was great. <laughs> Just, it felt well paced. It felt like they revealed th things at a really good pace. It was, it just, it was just a well-rounded episode yeah. for, and a good beginning part. Like it left on a really good cliffhanger. Oh yeah. Is it? Can it? Be, can it be next Saturday now? I don't say that every week. No. Yeah. But come on. Yeah. I knew it. Um, so yeah, nine point two five sort of. Okay, okay. Your turn. Um, I'm taking this, I'm taking this 9.5. 9.5. You went there. I went there. But I'm really like, curious about but what Connor See, was see, I generally really like this episode because one, it, okay, it brought the Zygons back in a really good way. Yeah, two, in a scary way. Two, it gave so much nostalgic feeling to it with all the callbacks to classic who. And the Easter eggs. Yeah. Um, Three, the awesome twist of Clara, which I was actually kind of happy because... <laughs> I actually, I forgot to mention this. I thought that they were going to do that with Kate. I thought Kate was going to be the one who uh, turned yeah. out to be a Zygon the whole time. And turned, nope, it's Clara. Yeah. Totally fooled me. So, I mean, Clara's a Zygon. And then, just, just the story. It feels... I mean, the, yeah, some, some of this was predictable, which is why it's not 10. But, you know, honestly... If, if everything was unpredictable, and I had seen nothing before this episode, nothing at all, don't, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but if I didn't know, if I couldn't see anything coming in my way, and I didn't know anything about this episode beforehand, I'd actually give it a 10. I would actually give it a 10. Because, honestly, this is, this is what Doctor Who should be. Like, this is, this is the ideal Doctor Who episode. And yeah. it shows the Doctor in his prime. I mean, this is great. This is, there was just some classic doc and, and Doctor. The, and, oh, and the one thing we talked about, uh, about this episode, I actually saw it more... Now, don't get me wrong, Capaldi totally fits in this episode. Yeah. But I saw it more as a Matt Smith episode. Um, where I felt his doctor would be more into this episode than Capaldi's one. But again, still, Capaldi did it, great it, as the doctor for this one. So and, it, and if that's the original vision that they had for it, they, they revised it well enough to integrate 12. Yeah. That it felt natural. Because it, it, felt, it, it felt like... Yeah. It was just so... It, I just love... Cap yeah. I love the 12th doctor in this season. Um, because because I think when Matt Smith... Originally, they had thought Matt Smith was going to go past um, 2013, and they had scripts written for Series 8, thinking that, you know, he was possibly going to still be the Doctor. It wasn't sure, but, you know, it wasn't known yet. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, once he did quit, and they got Capaldi on, I think they gave, like, Smith, Smith was able to kind of look ahead, see what they were doing, and yeah. he was like, I'm kind of um, jealous I quit when I did because these were episodes I wanted my doctor to do. Yeah. And again, as I just said, I could see Matt Smith's doctor in this episode. Yeah. Like, it fits him perfectly. And, oh, I just had a bad thought. What? <laughs> if they had known this in Matt Smith's era, how heartbreaking would that twist be of Clara's betrayal? Exactly, that's my <laughs> point. Like, like, I can just imagine because the 12th Doctor handles things very rationally and with less emotion, except when it comes to Clara, but but his reaction felt like the 12th Doctor. He the, very, because he was already kind of panicky, mm -hmm. and now he was, and now it, it just added on the extra, oh crap, they've got Clara, and they don't, that's really all they had time for. But just imagine the sadness that you know Matt Smith could pull off Which while again? having that bit of panic, but also the sadness and the hurt. My baby. Again. <laughs> Why this would be the perfect Matt Smith episode. Oh, you hurt me. How dare you. But again, it 
it still works for Capaldi. It does work for Capaldi so well because they didn't just try to make it a Matt Smith episode. They just made it what this episode is, and just you know, they they made yeah. it fit. It it was it was. Uh, it was good. What else can you say? I think we've, we've said, said it all. We've said a lot. So. And if Conan were here, he would be saying more, but probably. Um, well, but yes, fun. so um, that is our review for. Um, Series 9 of Doctor Who, Episode 7, Can't wait for The episode. Zygon Invasion. Can't wait for I think the eight. next one is Zygon Inversion, I think? Inversion. Oh! Oh, crap. Because they kept mentioning that gas that turns yeah. them inside out. Inversion. Oh, gosh. Which only the Doctor has. Which only the Doctor has, which, but, which but I, if it comes to that. Which I think it might. Ugh. Ugh. I don't know. Gross. But anyways, so yeah. I'm, we're totally excited for the next part, because yes. this part was awesome. Um, it better be awesome. But anyways, so yeah, so again... I'm, I'm Chell. She's Chell, I'm Zane. Again, happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. Oh, I hope Eat lots of candy and don't forget to brush your teeth. Yeah, um, and, you know, be, you know, be rational. And be safe. Make, make good decisions. Wear your reflectors. You know. Wear, have glow sticks. Yeah. Um, so, until Have a chaperone. Yeah. So hopefully next time we will have more people. I am honestly hoping we do. Please. Because I feel these next coming up episodes we're going to we need, need people. more people. We need people. Um, I mean this this is fun between us, but I feel like we need more we you need, know, we need, we need a more, group. We need a group. We need more perspectives than just you and me. We're like we're like the Knights of the Round Table, just King Arthur one night. Where are the other knights? Where are the other knights? I mean, you know. I'm, I mean but anyways, I'm just merely here. Yeah. But anyways. Um, so we'll see you guys next time, and until then, peace out guys. Thank you for participating.